an arrow is launched at a target and the target has a beginning height associated with it. So if the arrow falls 7.5 meters while going in the X direction, it'll hit the target. Now in this example, we're going to assume that it does hit the target. And our job is to find the velocity vector here. Now it's a horizontal launch. So our job is to find the velocity uh, value of the velocity when it gets launched. Okay, let's start with x direction, see what we know. The x direction, if it does hit the target, we do know the displacement is 23 meters. So displacement equals 23 meters, but we do not know time. And uh, we also do not know the velocity. So we have two unknowns in the x direction. That means uh, we must turn to the y direction in order to figure this out. So what do we know in the y direction? Well, the y direction, we know velocity 1 is equal to 0 meters per second because this one's launched horizontally. So no beginning velocity in the y direction. Velocity 2 is an unknown. Acceleration, negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Time is not known, but displacement is. It must fall a negative 7.5 meters in order for it to strike the target. So one more time, we do have only two unknowns here. We can solve for what we want based on the time again, and then we'll plug time in for our x direction. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Up here, I'll do that. So displacement equals V1T plus 1 half AT squared. So I'll go negative 7.5 equals, our first term will be 0, the V1T, because velocity 1 is 0, plus 1 half negative 9.8 T squared. Okay, easy to find. Time is equal to 1.2 seconds. Now we can put that in for time over here, 1.2 seconds. And use our d equals vt equation in the x direction to find velocity. So I have 23 is equal to velocity times 1.2 seconds. Okay, and we find that velocity in the x direction is 19 meters per second. So that's our first unknown. Now the arrow, of course, is going to go downwards like this, right, at an angle. We want to find what is the resultant velocity vector when this arrow reaches the target, just before it hits it. Okay, let's remind ourselves what a velocity vector should look like. The velocity vector would be angled downwards like this, but would have a velocity in the x direction and a velocity in the y direction like this. Think of every vector then as being a triangle. So we'll call this one v sub r and in this direction here this is our v sub x but but we know that now it's 19 meters per second so I'll put 19 meters per second there. And the arrow's velocity in the x direction would be constant all the way down. We need to find this part here, the velocity 2, in uh, particular located right here. So velocity 2 in the y direction. So let's do the v2 equals v1 plus at equation. So v2 is equal to 0 plus a negative 9.8 multiplied by 1.2 seconds. Remember, that's the time it takes for it to fall and also to get there. Solving for V2 and the Y, we get a, a negative 11.8 meters per second. Now I'm going to record that over here, negative 11.8 meters per second. So now we need to find the value of our resultant vector here. Okay, well, all we need to do now is to Pythagorize 19 and 11.8 together. So V sub R is going to equal the square root of 19 squared plus 11.8 squared. Now notice how I'm not including negatives because when we square them, uh, they do become positive. So V sub R 
has a value of 22 meters per second. Now that's the hypotenuse's value. There is an angle theta, okay, that the vector also needs to be listed at, because remember there are four things for every vector. Here's one thing, here's our second thing. So then I'll say the tangent of theta will equal our y over our x, so 11.8 divided by 19. Now I do not want this in decimal form. I do want it in angular form, so I'm going to write 32 degrees because I will have to inverse, take the inverse tangent of this ratio. And how do we reference it? Well, it's below the horizontal. So I'll label that below horizontal. So the velocity vector is 22 meters per second at 32 degrees below the horizontal.